question that I get a lot is, how do you get more variety out of GPT and language models? And so there's a few ways that you can do this. And one of the ways that most people are familiar with getting more variety and uh, variability and interesting outputs from GPT is just to turn up the temperature. And of course, you can turn up the temperature. Um, but what many people have noticed is I always keep the temperature at zero. And so when you keep the temperature of GPT at zero, it is mechanistic. It is uh, deterministic, meaning that with the same input, you will get the same output every single time. And so what you need to know about temperature is that this is an artificial way of getting variability. And so there's a lot of math involved. I talked to a professor from Duke University uh, a while ago about this, and the very simplified version is that there is a distribution of probable tokens. And what the temperature does is that it increases the likelihood of choosing a less likely token. And so this is why you can get just really random behaviors out of it just by turning up the temperature. Now, that being said, this is a simple math tweak and there is an entirely other uh, method of getting lots of randomness, lots of entropy and variability out of GPT models. And this is what I call uh, me mechanistic or algorithmic entropy. And so I ran an experiment a long time ago, back in GPT-3, so a whole generation ago, where the idea was I was going to generate uh, a bunch of synopses, uh, story synopses, so that I could uh, fine-tune a model to be a story synopsis generator. Obviously, with, uh, with the level of sophistication that models have today, that's no longer necessary because the context windows are larger, uh, which gives us room for more uh, instructions. It also, the models are smarter, which means that they can do a better job. So let me show you that original project real quick. So this was September 23rd, 2022, more than a year ago. So this is before ChatGPT uh, was even, uh, well, it was probably on the horizon. I think OpenAI was working on it, but before we even had the first inklings of it. So what I did with this, and it's very complex, but you can see uh, there's input formats that I was looking for. But the real key thing was lists of variables. So this is this is what I mean by algorithmic entropy is where you can take information sources. In this case, I just use a, like several lists of variables, which when you have like they multiply, right? So let's say you have five lists of five variables. Um, you pick one at random, you have 25 different combinations uh, to start with. But you go up to a list of like if you have 10 variables and you have 30 versions each, that's uh, that it goes up. Uh, is it? exponentially, factorially, anyways, you get a lot of options um, when you have all these variables that, to pick from. And so for instance, in generating synopsis, I had a bunch of character profiles. So in this case, I had 30 different character profiles to pick from, and that was just one variable. I also had genres to pick from. I think I had over 100 genres, yeah, 192 genres to pick from. Then in terms of paces, I, I had only three paces to pick from. So this is how fast the story, so you know, fast pace intensifying, or leisurely, um, and then settings. In terms of settings, I had 34, and of course, you can have hundreds and hundreds of settings. Uh, then storylines, you know, action-packed, character-driven. I had 11 options here. So in total, I think I calculated it out back when I, when I first made this. There was like 187 million different uh, combinations that this schema would come up with. And obviously that is more combinations than you will ever generate. It is more than you will ever read, but that is also a vast number of options. And so then I wanted to show you kind of how I would approach this today. So you can ignore that, that old repository in the scripts because again, that was back in the days of GPT-3, which had a much smaller token window and uh, very different limitations from what we have today. So. Hello, David Shapiro here. I am once again asking for your support. Please head on over to my Patreon page right now and sign up. You can get on the free tier, which means you'll get some critical updates about my books that are coming out. But if you want the real shindig, the full shebang, you should join on one of the $5 or $50 tiers. We've got a lot of cr creative and clever people there. You're going to have a real ball if you join. So head on over right now. It's patreon.com slash Dave Shap. You can't miss it and you can't miss out. So the reason I'm making this video is because I get this question a lot um, from my Patreon, uh, from clients, from you know comments or whatever. And so this is far and away the best way to get entropy or variability or creativity out of GPT. So uh, this, this technique applies to uh, marketing, to fiction, to 
uh, even problem solving, honestly, like you could do the same thing. And so mission, you are a story synopsis generator. Again, you always give it mission or context. Uh, you will be given a list of variables, which you will then use to brainstorm a complete story synopsis. Uh, all three acts, not just the overview. Output format, I tell it what format to use. Uh, just basically use markdown and headers. Scope, I said each act that you describe should be three solid paragraphs. Three acts uh, and three paragraphs means nine full paragraphs in total. And then another thing I said, give it character name and places. Make sure you come up with specific names for everyone in every place. Do not use generic placeholders like the main character. This is something that GPT does is it'll kind of use like the main character, uh, their hometown. You know, it'll kind of refer to the things rather than naming them. So I said, all right, make sure you use proper names for everything. So then I went back to my old repo and I grabbed a whole bunch of variables. So tone, creepy, unsettling, and visceral, time, middle, renaissance, style, dialect filled, uh, scope, sweeping, location, Scandinavia, pace, intensifying, genre, conspiracy, thriller, characters, exaggerated, larger than life. And so then what it generated, it says, in the heart of Scandinavia during the middle renaissance, a peculiar and unsettling tale unfolds. Our protagonist, a robust and eccentric so scholar named Olaf Gustafsson. I'm pretty sure that's the name of what's his name from uh, Vikings Valhalla. Actually, no, it's Olaf Haraldsson. Anyways, resides in the bustling city of Stockholm. Olaf is known for his larger than life personality and his insatiable curiosity about the world. Which, whoops, where did it go? Come back, come back! Uh, which, darn, uh, which often leads him into strange and dangerous situation. He stumbles upon an ancient uh, manuscript hidden in the depths of the Royal Library. The main, So you can see, like, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but you can see that it really took these variables and ran with it. And, like, you make these lists longer, or what you can also do, and this is a more advanced technique, is you can use prompt chaining, such as Langchain or Tree of Thought or whatever, to actually brainstorm the lists of variables first. And then you pick from those variables randomly. Now, you do need to add entropy from outside the model. So this is something that anyone familiar with computer science will know is that uh, generating true randomness is actually really hard. So if you use the language model to generate its own randomness, you're going to be intrinsically constrained because like a computer, it's just computing. So you can use, like if you have a, a, a random list generator, you can go, you can take the temperature higher. And so here's, what, here's how I would do this. Let me, um, let me show you real quick. Okay, so this is an example of why you don't want to use high temperature is because I set the temperature to two and it, you know, it said Loki and then just completely went off the rails. So this is why I don't rely on temperature because it just breaks the model. So let's turn that temperature back down. And so you say like Scandinavian names. Um, and so then Anders, Bjorn, yada, 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 etc. So, but obviously if you run this again, you'll get the same exact list. Anders, Bjorn, Karsten, etc. So... Obviously, if it's very deterministic, you need to change some input variables. So there's a few ways that you can do this. You can literally just do like random characters, which is easy enough to generate from, you know, the random uh, 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 module in Python. And this will give you different results. So leaving it at a temperature zero. Actually, no, it didn't. Oh, no, we're getting a couple different ones. Um, but then you can also turn the temperature up a little bit, which will also help you get some more different results. Actually, no, we're still getting pretty similar results. This is actually a really good example as to why that algorithmic entropy is really good because then, like, you can say, like, Scandinavian names, you know. Then you could also add other variables like uh, royal names, coastal names, uh, you know, wealthy names or whatever. And so then this will actually give you, hopefully, give you some different results. Eric, Ingrid, Bjorn, yeah. So you see, by uh, adding some some variables, this is the key thing that you need to know for entropy is injecting variables from external sources, whether you read it from RSS feeds or Twitter posts or Reddit posts or even the, the, the uh, you know, just random lists of words. So there's like dictionaries out there that you can um, use this to inject from. Anyways, I just wanted to get this video out there because this is a question that I've gotten a few times um, recently. So it tells me that uh, some of you needed to know this. So yeah, I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, the repo, if you want to go check it out, is the Dave Schaap slash synopsis generator. Like I said, this is an old, old, old thing. The code is completely useless today, but there is some useful information in here if you just want to see how I went about it and all the formatting and stuff. And I showed you the story uh, synopsis that it generated just a moment ago, which worked really well. So anyways, thanks for watching. Cheers, like, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Have a good one.